Hey, what's up, Metal and Heavy Music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and it's time to look through some more requests and recommendations from Bandcamp. But before I do that, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel if you like to stay up to date with this kind of stuff. I upload new content every single week. All right, first up, we've got Moonthoth with Zamora. It's a Polish band. Have not listened to this just yet. Okay. Was expecting black metal, was not <laughs> uh, disappointed. Moonthoth emerged from the depths of murky, vast Slavic forests. Hell yeah. From Wolfspell Records, just some classic second wave sounding black metal. Kind of deathier vocals, too. Getting some immortal vibes, a little bit early immortal from the riffs. But uh, vocals, yeah, a little bit deeper, more intense. And let me just say again that because I'm sharing these bands on this segment as opposed to one of the other ones doesn't really mean uh, anything in terms of quality. It's just I get so much stuff and it's impossible for me to do like full reviews of everything. So this is a nice quick way to make sure I can share out even more stuff. And the reality, too, is that I get so many bands that sound a lot like this and have heard so much that sounds a lot like this that I kind of run out of things to say about it, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. Like, this is really good. And I think those of you out there who like this kind of raw, cult, so to speak, black metal can really find something to enjoy with this album. So it's out right now. Again, it's Moonthoth, Zamora. All right, then we've got God with God for Revelation. This was a band that I wish I had the time to do a full review, but I was just kind of overwhelmed by this 22 track uh, <laughs> track listing here for the album. But make no mistake, these guys are incredibly talented. And it's just, I, I need to be able to go, go, go and get reviews out. And so when the releases are this long, it makes that difficult. They're an instrumental, kind of progressive, death metal sort of band. Let's skip forward a bit here. Yeah. Lots of layers to their sound. We're very technical. Each song is a little bit different. Listen to those drums, too. My god. So good. And it's Name Your Own Price, too, so no excuse not to grab this thing. And even though they're instrumental, they do, they're one of those bands that do enough with the various instruments that you don't even necessarily miss that there's no vocalist. It's like they make up for it in a big way. What else we got here? Yeah, they got some more kind of atmospheric, melodic stuff on here too. So just a lot of different dynamics, big variety in their sounds. This one even sounds more like almost like a metalcore track. Kind of reminds me of um, Mendel from Aborted, or previously of Aborted now. Um, he does solo instrumental stuff in sort of a similar vein, but I feel like this potentially takes that even to a completely different level, so do not sleep on God. <laughs> Alright, then we've got Krusty Old Toad with Doom, Gloom, and Poon, and I was told uh, when the uh, madman himself, Toadorus, Crusticus <laughs> asked me to give this a listen to, you know, even though there's clearly a sense of humor here in the imagery and the naming, that the music is still deadly serious. So let's give it a listen. They're out of Portland, Oregon, too, so props to my local boys and ladies. Album's not out yet, but you've got four tracks you can listen to. It comes out at the end of July. Just kind of classic, more black metal but more of a melodic tinge to it. Skip forward a bit. Yeah. Very kind of depressive vibe too, which is part of the reason I think why I didn't decide to do a full review on this one. I, I just need more uplifting music right now. Um, listening to depressing music is just not where my brain is at in the moment, but I know plenty of people who this is absolutely where they're at, so definitely check it out. They got some great album art. Uh, I like this one from the last album, too. This one's just funny. 
sort of a Kermit the Frog. Reminds me of that uh, Kermit meme where he's got the hood on and it's like regular Kermit versus evil Kermit. I don't know if that was intentional here or not. Uh, their other tracks also have some like heavy metal influence on it. You can hear it in the guitars. Nice little fusion there, I dig that. And I'd even say uh, this track, Scared by a Werewolf, reminds me a lot of what Tribulation are doing with that sort of goth rock, gloomy, black metal stuff. This has a nice little hook on it too, if I can get to it. Scared by a Werewolf. <laughs> Fun. Nice soloing too, but yeah, very talented, again. Don't let the imagery fool you. They are very talented. All right, Stargazers from Drops of Heart was an album I had considered doing a full review of, but again, just time wouldn't allow it. This one is also not out yet. It comes out July 22nd. They are a Russian band and do melodic death metal, but <clears throat> with a lot of Kind of there's there's some post metal elements in here too another kind of big mood band but this is sort of their heaviest song and it's the one that got me interested to begin with i think this is the one that has the music video to go along with it too yeah a lot of sort of like soil work and in flames sounding guitars and speaking of which bjorn strid of soil work is actually on this album featured on the track starlight track has a long intro. It's a good intro, but it's long. Alright, here's the vocals. Right? Just classic kind of Gothenburg sounding riffs there. I live for this stuff. And, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Good, like really good melodic death metal albums are kind of few and far between these days, I feel like. It's sort of fallen out of favor compared to the late 90s, early 2000s when that genre was king. So I try to share as many bands that do it right as possible. Um, I believe all the lyrics and singing are in Russian too, if I recall from listening to the whole thing, but definitely check it out. All right, Mattachine are a metallic hardcore group. The album is called Isolation as a Form of Torture. They're from Zegama Beach Records, which I highly recommend following their Bandcamp page because they put out some really great underground hardcore, post-hardcore, and everything in between. And it's just like, this is that break shit, <laughs> heavy metallic hardcore stuff. If you like, like me, stuff like Vane, Loathe, uh, Code Orange, Harm's Way, Knocked Loose, like this is this is the album for you. It's a short EP, Name Your Own Price. I believe all of Zegma Beach Records stuff is Name Your Own Price, which is pretty cool. And yeah, it's it's just really solid. I plan on downloading this one after I get off recording this probably, just so I can spend more time with it. But man, those vocals are just vicious. Like, he's gonna blow out his larynx. I mean, it's gonna be great for us as listeners, but it's not gonna be good for him down the road. And those panic chords, I'm such a sucker for that. Always brings me back to days listening to like Memphis will be laid to waste. Great stuff. And I love this bass intro to this track too, that rumble with the squealing distortion. Oh. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, The Phantom Carriage was another one I almost did a full review on, but I just kind of struggled to find words for a full review, so I thought it just felt more appropriate to share it here. They're from Throat Ruiner Records, another great label. They kind of remind me the most of, like, Zayo, I guess, like early Zayo. Uh, just, like, late 90s metalcore genres just taking off has a more raw sounds and yeah very gloomy more that seems to be a theme today of these bands they also have some kind of like black metal elements you hear almost those like kind of death spell sounding riffs and when things start to pick up uh 
It's almost like a Scandinavian hardcore scene in there too, stuff like Hexus. But you hear those like black metal sounding riffs mixed in with it. But then they throw you for a loop. And let me get to that part. Yeah. Then you got this chorus that is just, again, kind of reminded me of early metalcore. In fact, there was a local band in my high school days that uh, sounded a lot like uh, this. I still have their uh, little slipcase demo on my shelf, and I'm forgetting the name at this moment. But they had a chorus on one of their songs that sounded a lot like this. But this was just sort of the classic sound of that time. So it, it really runs the gamut. And... Again, it's a good album. It's I didn't not review it because it's not a good album. It's just I have so much other stuff to cover. And if like the words don't come to me, if I don't have that inspiration right away, I kind of move along because I just want to get as much out there as I can. Yeah, you hear that very, very just mournful sound to a lot of the guitars. More just sort of depressive vibes, but also very heavy. So yeah, check out Phantom Carriage 7 Year Epilogue. It is out right now via Throat Runer. They're a French band too, by the way. All right, and then last but not least, we have They Left From Burning Windows with their demo 2020. More raw kind of cult black metal. I really like their logo, but as I was looking at it, uh, I had a major <laughs> revelation as to what the band name is referencing. And I can't really talk about it here because certain topics will get you demonetized or in trouble. And so uh, suffice it to say is you look at these two structures here and the fire coming off of them and think about the phrase they left from burning windows, I think you get the idea. So uh, I have a feeling some people are going to be upset by that. But to me, black metal has always been about kind of highlighting the most tragic, most hate-filled moments of our history, and that is definitely up there on that scale. So I, I don't see it as necessarily, I, I think some people would see it as potentially, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, like taking advantage of it or being edgy, and maybe it is, but I, I see it more as just kind of you know, putting putting the event out there. And I think the vibe of the music seems to fit that. Very just raw, sad sounding stuff. That uh that kind of more screamy vocal there reminds me more of like Charlie Fell from Lord Mantis too. Yeah, this is good good stuff. Again, I get a lot of bands that sound a lot like this, so it's just hard for me. I run out of words to cover them all, but Good enough that I wanted to make sure you all were aware of it and had the opportunity to go check it out on your own. Yeah, I like the more kind of melodic riffs mixed with that ugly production. It's very second wave. I may end up spending more time with this, but again, I just have to kind of like go, 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 keep moving on to the next one all the time, which is uh, sometimes frustrating because there's just so much good music out there. But this is a Alaskan band too, by the way. I've had a handful of Alaskan bands over the years, but not a place that I commonly get music from. But I feel like you kind of hear that coldness coming through in the music. So yeah, they left from Burning Windows. And I think that's good for today. I always got new requests and recommendations coming through, but let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite other bands that I should check out <laughs> should I find the time. And uh, stick around, of course, afterwards, because there's more in this series, and then there's also full album, more formal reviews, album roundups, tier lists for band discographies and genres and also the podcast where I get to interview all these interesting bands. Also in the description, you can find links to all of our social media, the email newsletter, and our Patreon, and subscribe star if you want to make that extra step to becoming a full supporter. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.